Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. Let's talk about the problem, quote unquote, of making more money with assets than games. So this is based on a very interesting post from a developer with a very curious problem. They're making more money selling assets than games. Here's a post where the developer says, help, I'm making more money selling assets than selling games. So years ago, I started learning 3D modeling and Unreal Engine and always made some money selling assets. It's not much, but everything helps pay the bills. Last year, I decided to use some of my assets, some Unreal Marketplace assets and start making games. My logic was that the gaming market is much bigger than the asset market, that's true. So even if I'm selling a cheaper product, there's much more buyers. Right? And nope, wrong. The video game market is a different thing. You'll need marketing, lots of testing, and find a balance to please different feedback and expectations. And in video games, everyone seems to know better. Why isn't it online? Why isn't it mobile? Yeah, dealing with players is definitely going to be a very different thing as opposed to just dealing with other developers. Making a game takes much more time, more skills, and the customers are very hard to get. Heard it a lot of times here that it's hit or miss a lot of times, but I didn't expect to be so hard to start getting some return. So yeah, this sounds like a pretty funny problem to have, but it is definitely an interesting discussion. Like I wrote here, this is something that a lot of people might not realize is also a path you can follow. You can make money making games, or you can be a full-time tools or assets developer. This is something that perhaps some of you might have never even considered. You might just think game dev equals making games, but that's not the case. You definitely have these two possible paths. You can indeed make games, that's the obvious path, but you can also become just a tools developer, assets developer, that can also be a viable path, and depending on your skill set, might actually be easier or harder than making a game. So for example, there are several developers and entire companies like Odin and City Studios that make a living from selling assets on the various asset stores. So you've got the Unity Asset Store, you've got Fab, Turk Squid, Envato, which by itself, that's another great tip. If you're making games, obviously don't just sell them on Steam, try to sell them everywhere you can. So try to sell it on Steam, on the Humble Store, Maybe try to get it on GOG, on the Epic Game Store, then perhaps try to post it to consoles. So put it on the Xbox Store, put it on the PlayStation Store, on the Switch Store, and so on. And on assets, you can do very much the same thing. So the Unity Asset Store, I believe that is still very much the biggest one. But you also have Fab, that's by Unreal. Then you've got Turbo Squid for more 3D stuff, and Vato for more 2D and 3D stuff. So if you make assets, also remember that there's not just the Unity Asset Store. That's a great place, it's probably, I think, the biggest place. But still, make sure you sell it everywhere. If you want to follow this strategy of busily trying to make a living as a tool and asset developer. As for what you can make, you can make visual asset packs, you can make sound and music packs, you can sell animations, sell UI packs, you can sell complete game kits, or of course just sell individual tools. Now some of those, like the ASAR Pathfinding Project Pro, can make a ton of money, but I don't think there are any public numbers, so not sure exactly how much. I made a video review on the ASAR Pathfinding Project, definitely one of the best assets by far. It is something that I've used in many of my Steam games, super helpful. And here on the asset store, Again, sales numbers aren't actually public, so there's no idea how much money this asset made. But on the asset store, most assets have some like 0 to 5 reviews. So the fact that this one has 800 reviews, that means it has definitely sold a massive amount. With this one being $140, $130. So at 50% off, it is still like $60 or $70. By that, yep, I would not be surprised to see that this one has made multiple millions of dollars. Although, of course, always you've got pros and cons. So like I wrote here, Although, just like with Steam itself, the asset store is also extremely crowded. If you make yet another generic platformer on Steam, you will likely sell zero copies. And if you make yet another generic low poly pack on the asset store, you will also likely sell zero copies. So making tools slash assets is definitely a viable path. But again, the same questions that you have with regards to marketing that you have on Steam, you also have those same questions when making assets. You've got to make an asset that there are people that actually want to buy. There are already tons and tons of general low poly packs. So if you make just another one, it's going to be very hard to send out. And at the same time, you probably also need to do quite a bit more marketing yourself in order to make sure that it works. If you just publish it on the asset store, over here you can scroll down and see just how many assets are published. If you just publish your asset and you don't do any marketing, it's going to be very tricky. So for example, if over here we set the release date to literally just one month ago, and if there you go, we've got almost 2,000 results. So that's about 70 assets every single day coming out on the store. So yep, in order for you to stand out from those 70 per day, you definitely need to do something a bit more special and find some way of telling people that your asset exists. So like I said here, so the same lessons you'll learn about marketing Steam games, meaning validate your idea, analyze if there's an audience for it, figure out how to reach that audience, those same questions also apply when making assets. So definitely don't assume you can just make an asset, upload it to the asset store, and sit back to watch the money roll in. It doesn't work like that. Yep, so keep this in mind. If you follow this path, remember the same marketing rules that you use on Steam. You need to use those on the asset store. And if you want to learn about marketing in general, you can watch the various videos that I did with Chris Zukowski. Chris is a Steam marketing expert. He's got a lot of marketing knowledge. 
So definitely go ahead and watch all these videos that I made with him if you want to learn quite a bit more about marketing. Then over here, just a fun fact, Unity itself actually started like this. So when the company was founded, they were making a game, it's called Goobo, which was a complete swap. However, in building the game, they had to build an engine from scratch, and they realized perhaps it would be best to sell the engine itself rather than selling games, and then the rest is history. So yeah, in case you don't know, Goobo was a 2005 arcade sound puzzle video game developed by Over the Edge Entertainment, now named Unity Technologies, for Mac OS X. Though it was highly downloaded, the game was commercially unsuccessful, leading Over the Edge to change focus from making games to making the Unity engine. So who knows, perhaps you yourself could have a similar path. Perhaps you might start off by trying to make a game, and perhaps that game might not be as successful. But in building the game, you might actually discover that some of the tools that you build to help you build the game, those might actually be more valuable than the game itself. And if you do, then you might actually encounter this problem yourself of making more money with assets than games. So here I also wrote, I have only made one paid asset and a few free ones and the results were pretty middling. I think I've only sold about 100 copies. But if I were to keep working on it, if I did some market research to figure out what tools people might need, and if I had a large library selling multiple assets, then I think I could make a living off of it. I'm actually thinking of making another asset in the near future, something fun to help quickly prototype games based on the hundreds of tutorials that I've done over the years. Stay tuned in the coming months. And yep, since I wrote this newsletter, I have indeed made and published my Code Monkey Tone Kit. And it is just like that. It's a collection of the tons of the tutorials that I made over the years, put them all in one place to help you basically save a ton of time by reusing a ton of these tools that are so useful in many scenarios. And this one, thankfully, was actually very successful. In total, it has sold about a thousand copies, which is definitely quite a bit more than I was expecting, so that was an awesome surprise. Thank you all so much to everybody who picked up the asset. I hope you're finding it quite useful to help you in making all kinds of games you want to make. So now you know that as a game dev, you can follow basically two paths. You can either make money making games, or you can be a full-time tools and asset developer. If you want to learn more about this topic, there's an excellent video published by Infenzia titled Earn a Living Selling Game Assets. He has made exactly that. He's made quite a bit of money selling assets and also quite a bit of money making games. I couldn't believe it. I did some quick math. $650 per day times 365 days per year. That's 237,000. You can make hundreds of thousands of dollars creating and selling game assets. I'm going to tell you how I did it and I'm going to show you how you can do it. So yeah, definitely check out this video. By the way, I wrote about this in my Game Dev Report newsletter. This is my newsletter that I write every single week. I include all of the weekly Game Dev news and any interesting Game Dev articles that I come across every week. Sign up for free with a link in the description. And if you want some gorgeous environments, there's an excellent home bundle out right now. It is literally 99% off. This one is filled with tons of environments that are on Humble Bundle for the very first time. For example, this gorgeous 1950s New York City. This would be perfect for a Mafia game. Or maybe this fantasy castle would be perfect for some kind of Dark Souls or Elden Ring game. This stylized environment could be great in some kind of adventure game. You could use this one in some kind of cyberpunk or utopia game. Or this one on a nice Roman or Greek kind of action game. So yep, it features tons and tons of packs, all of them looking really great. The whole thing is worth almost 5 grand, you can get it for just 30 bucks. Check it out with the link in the description. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.